What's happening, good people? How we doing? How are we doing, good people? Welcome to Montez at Midday. I'm your host, Dre Montez, and we're being brought to you by our title sponsor, The Weed Squad, St. Louis. Feel free to check them out at 8088 Watson Road. If it's your first time checking us out, thank you so much. You can follow us throughout social media. We have a page on Facebook, Instagram, Who's to Blame, the podcast, Twitter, at W2B, Dre Montez, and we also have a YouTube channel, Dre Montez. Hit that subscribe button. Get on over there. Get caught up on the latest episodes of Montez at Midday, which you get a chance to listen to each and every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at 11 a.m. Central Standard Time. Right there. There you have it. Visit the website as well to get a complete listing of all the sponsors. Thank you so much to those guys as they're scrolling on the bottom of the screen here. So go to www.dremontez.com. You know what we got to do? High fives. Chest bump. Ah, let's hug this thing out. Get in there for the real thing. Oh, there you go. Get in there for a hug. Oh, buddy, there you go. All right. Got them hugs out the way right there. Hope everyone's having a great midday on this beautiful, gorgeous Wednesday. It's a great day for natural hair. Get out there, those of you know who you are. But on that note, that being said, right there, you check all that out, get yourself comfortable, try to bring something to you to brighten your day, because my day has keep getting brighter and brighter as things behind the scenes are really starting to click and go together in the right direction. You know, a lot of podcasters do their own thing. They buy themselves. It's very few shows that have a, a true partnership all the time. You can't do this thing alone. You need a team, you need a wrecking force, you need to move with the people, you know. There really is no I in team, there's us in team, so you need to get a team of us together. But I'm happy to announce that I have joined and partnered up with this amazing team and group, All Sports, All Plays, the ASAP Network. Looking forward to that, that's going to be a lot of fun, so I'm going to jump in on some NFL talk. MLB playoffs as well, and little college football. It should be a lot of fun, a lot of fun. Branching out, getting to spread my wings, so to speak. You know, get get, get to meet some more podcasters out there. And I, I mentioned this on the show the other day about wanting to get a, a meeting in place locally here in St. Louis, possibly in the Sulaw area or South City area, that we can meet once a month if you're a podcaster. If you have desires to podcast or you've been doing it, you're not too sure about this thing. If you're an expert and you want to give some feedback on what to do and what not to do when it comes to putting on a podcast, I'm quite sure we all have something to add to that and take from that. And if we could get together, maybe 10 to 15 people possibly, I think that'd be a good turnout. You know, we start showing numbers. I'm talking about meeting once a month, you know, and just fill it out, you know, because there's... A lot of potential that I have listened to, met, and guys and women that are about to start up in this game. So I think we got to make the process a little bit more easier for them and a little bit more adaptable and having a network, a very strong and positive network put together. But if you're interested in that, there are several ways you can get hold of me. You can inbox me, of course, and then some of you have my number, or you can email me as well. But get a hold of me if that sounds like something you would want to do. I talk with my man. Uh, Darren Yates last night about the same thing and he's all on board and I talked to my man Big Stu as well he's on board so and I've talked to a few other podcasters and live streaming show guys locally that would be greatly interested in this so it's going to be a lot of fun I got to reach out to my man uh, Pat White as well because I know he's on the on the on a real real close path to possibly getting this thing and expanding his music to the podcasting world as well and my man Kurt Copeland so I'm going to reach out to a few more people right there in the podcast board. I mentioned the event that I went to last night. Shout out, big ups to Big Stu, Studio of Photography, as well as the MX. I don't know if you guys have been to the MX in downtown St. Louis. They put on a pretty cool event. 
yesterday was a happy hour. If you've never been, it's the old St. Louis Center. If you're an old head, old school. If you've been before, I think you need to revisit this thing. If you have a, a special event or occasion coming up, I think it's a great place. They have a nice bar. If you have a promotional or marketing event behind the bar, it's this nice uh, projection screen. You can put announcements up there, or video footage, or whatever you want to do. And also, you can have a private screening and some food tastings from Sugar Fire, as well as the uh, young lady that was doing the phone cakes. Who claims to have the best turkey legs in St. Louis? She's located at 11th and Washington. Now, I usually don't do that for people, giving them just a free plug like that, but I, I really, really, really enjoy the evening put on. But if you guys are in the company, a position of putting on an event, or hosting an event, or looking for a venue or a spot, I advise you to check out the MX in downtown St. Louis at 6 in Washington and contact the lovely Sarah, who's the uh, general manager there, and she'll take care of all of your needs. But it was a lot of fun. And speaking of shows being there, that that's a an upcoming possibility I'm thinking about doing of having a a live event for my 500 podcast. So somebody's got to do it. I mean, they they give you milk when you do the Daytona 500 and the Indianapolis 500. Or did I get those backwards? I probably got those backwards. But last night was a great marketing opportunity when you're talking a lot of the time in a room by yourself, it kind of helps to get out and mingle with the people. So I really, really enjoyed myself last night. Really did. It was great to meet some amazing people that I admire their work and want to be a part of what they're doing as well. So it went very, very well last night. There you go. There you go. All right. You just tuned in. You've heard it here. I'm joining forces with the ASAP Network. All sports, all plays. It's going to be a lot of fun. A lot of fun. Looking forward to it. Got my first show with them tomorrow. Hey, it is right there. Tomorrow, following the NFL game. It's going to be a lot of fun tomorrow. All right, let's get on into it. It is way back Wednesday. So it's the days of yesteryear. And for some reason, I'm crazy about documentaries, especially when it's a sports documentary. Not the documentary that other people but giving you their own uh, rendition of this person or event or whatever took place this documentary is about in a sports world. I like it when the actual people were involved or are involved and they're giving you feedback on what actually happened, what the mind, what the process was like there. And now I'm getting to see that the year that really made me wonder about the mindset of me being 15 years old, about to turn 16, the 1986 Mets. And ESPN has graced us again with a magnificent 30 for 30, shown at the right time. Coincidentally enough, the Mets and the Cardinals are playing in a series right now. Yeah. So the Cardinals were a lot of the topic and conversation in this documentary. And wow, they did a phenomenal job. I mean, baseball was totally different back then in the 80s. The, the game play, the way the game was approached, the way the game was talked about, the, game, the way the game was handled by the athlete at that time, the way the media covered the 1986 World Series, and the expectations of the fans on both teams that win the World Series. You had the Mets and the Boston Red Sox. But the process of getting to that point is why I love sports so much. There's a process in putting things together. You got to have the right pieces in place to win. You just can't go out there and manage 25 guys and think you're going to get W's all the time. It has to be some strategy in there. You got to do some scouting. You got to know when to call guys up, when to move guys, when to bring in that veteran, when to make that key trade, that acquisition that's going to put your team out of neutral but in the drive now. And we're on to something. And the way they brought up Doc, that was awesome. The way Gary Carter came over, Keith Hernandez, all those pieces right there. But that is one of the main reasons I love sports documentaries. They get to the to the truth of it. That moment that we've always been arguing about on the playground, in the locker room, at the water cooler, at the office. It doesn't matter. At the bar, at the barbershop. 
And then they finally make these documentaries, the ones that we really need and, and should see and want to see to get to that point of why we keep arguing about this. And now we get to hear all these stories. For the Mets, high a majority of the time they play ball. Hey. Hey, Davey let them do what they needed to do as long as they came to work ready to work. That was it. That was the antithesis of him having that position, I do believe. They knew at that moment what that team needed, a spark in a different sense. But before that, things I did not know about the New York Mets. Because when you live in St. Louis, you don't pay that much attention to the right coast, that much, unless you're a partier of something like that. But beyond that, I've never just jumped up and said, hey, uh, I want to go to New York. That has never happened. That is just, I, I don't know why. Not saying I'm, I don't want to go to New York. It's just There's never been a reason I wanted to go. Maybe when the Super Bowl was there and they had the ship in the harbor and they had the Super Bowl party on the ship. Maybe then. Maybe then. But other than that, I don't know. In 1977, there was no electricity in New York. Didn't know that at all. Through the blackout. The Dodgers and the Giants left. Bye-bye. We got to go. See ya. Adios. I did know that the orange in the Mets uniform is for the Giants. The blue that's in the uniform is for the Dodgers. Didn't know that. Interesting facts I found out last night. When Tom Seaver was traded to the Reds, I, people thought they were going to lose their damn mind. That was the best player. There was any hope they ever had. Any resemblance of showing respect, moderation for the guy. In the way he approached the game. But when that trade happened, New York Mets fans were, were pretty much done. They were like, oh, man, God, what are we going to do? Then moving forward, a, little cute, a few key things happened. Nelson Doubleday, you know, Abner Doubleday, the so-called creative baseball. Nelson got the team in 80. Then he went and got... Frank Cashin as the GM. That right there did it. That right there. And the George Foster, picking up George Foster at that time, that was a little risky. He had OLD. He's the old man river. But what did it was Daryl Strawberry. Strawberry coming up 83 of May. Daryl Strawberry was something. That, the swing, the long legs in those Mets pants, his swagger. Then you found out a little bit more about the straw. You found out a little bit more of the dark side of the straw. Whether you appreciate it or not, or, or, or with it or not, the guy still came to work, except for a couple of times. No, that was Doc Good. But the straw was always ready to go to work. The way they just nonchalantly just mentioned, oh, you know, I went to the back of the plane and they were, they were doing blow back there. Oh, okay, all right. Well, I, I roomed up over here on purpose, you know, because, uh, you know, they, they were doing blow. Well, well, this guy introduced me to cocaine. You know, we pretty much ran New York. If you were a Met player in 86, I say 84, 85, 86, 87, they pretty much had the red carpet tree, the baseball players, the New York Mets. And what they revealed yesterday, I mean, we kind of already knew about the cocaine and the alcohol, Strawberry, Keith Hernandez, um, Doc Gooden, the way Davey Johnson allowed the team to be that way. It was a different way that baseball was approached. They were going to fight. They were going to bang. One of the best fights ever was against the Reds. It was a great fight. Great fight. I don't condone fighting, but hey, if you're going to tell me as a pitcher, that you're going to hit me on purpose? Oh, I'm getting that ass too. I'm charging the mile. I'm, I'm coming at you. We're going to throw hands. We're going to get this issue off right now. But fighting to damn Major League Baseball is totally different. Did you see the Yankees and the Mets on Sunday night? They just stood there. They're all about talk now. Not saying I want these guys to fight. They're not saying that at all. But back then it was totally, totally different. And the fact they hung out at CBGB's like that. I like the CBGB's here on Grand back in the day. I want to say uh, the early 2000s. That, that was the spot up there on Grand. That was the spot. That was the place to be. 
what else happened interesting that I saw. I had no idea that Keith Hernandez took whatever his dad said to heart. That's serious. A lot of Major League Baseball players' dads were rough on their kids. I'm talking guys in the Hall of Fame, on the way to the Hall of Fame, names that people always talking about. When it comes to their dad, their dad barely thought they were, medi they thought they were mediocre. And that bothered a lot of Major League Baseball players. Especially if their dad died before they finished the league. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. You're missing that phone call, that conversation. I mean, Keith Hernandez was calling his dad after each at bat to try to figure it out. We've all been in that rut. You don't know what you're doing wrong, so you do strange shit. You eat this. You wear that. You put this on. You take that off. You change up the ritual. You got to mix up the mechanism, so to speak. Not a Met fan at all, but I was just curious about the 1986 season. For one, the way things broke down. And we're still not even there yet. I didn't know that Mookie got hit in the eye in training. Didn't know that Davey Johnson mouthed out to the world that we're going to win this thing. But they ran into that slump that all baseball teams do. That's okay. I knew the Mets and the Cardinals, you know, had a little, yeah. But I had no idea it got that bad. Where you got players today saying they still hate the fucking Cardinals. That's, that's intensity. If you retired from Major League Baseball in the 90s and you still hold a beef, that's dedication. I know two men 60 plus years old. One is still mad at the other one. For cheating on his aunt in middle school <laughs> in 1951. <laughs> I mean, some shit you gotta let go. I mean, I just recently, recently, within the past five years, just forgave Bill Buckner for letting that ball go between his legs. I, I just can't get over it. I have trouble, you know, going through the motions, right? We're going to take a short break here and have a word from our sponsor, that being Mount Man Scrub. Get your scrub on. Go to mountmanscrub.com and get your Mount Man Scrub. As smooth as a river flows. MountManScrub.com Get your scrub on. All right. Okay. All right. We're back right there. There you go. That's for my YouTube people and Twitter people. And then when we repost it on Facebook, you get a chance to see what I'm talking about. By the way, if you're celebrating a birthday today, happy birthday to you. Special shout-out birthday to two Man Cave members. Man Cave member Jay. He's in Tampa this weekend. He's going to go see the Broncos. Take on the Jaguars. And Man Cave member Slick, who is the only Man Cave member that's a Tampa Bay Buccaneer fan. The president is not a Buccaneer fan. He's a bandwagon guy. He follows teams that win the Super Bowl. And that's, the guy has eight teams, and that should not be allowed. We tried to impeach him. We've tried to dethrone him. We tried to blackmail him. It's not working. So we're just going to let him have as many teams as he's won. There you go. There you go. There you go. There you go. I won my fantasy game, by the way, but I was not the highest score in the fantasy football league. Sponsored by Tower Pub, located in South City on Morgan Ford. They are now carrying the NFL ticket for the first time in 15 years. Get on up there and get your cheering on, no matter what the cause or the people. If you're just tuning in, welcome back to Way Back Wednesday edition of Montez at Midday. We discussed a great event last night put on at MX at 6 in Washington last night. It was great meeting everybody, seeing the people, had an awesome time. Again, thank you to Sarah, the GM down at MX, and my man Big Stu from Big Stu Studios and Photography right there because we got an upcoming show with Big Stu this Friday. It's going to be a lot of fun. 
going to bring the show to you in a different format. You get to view it, and you guys let me know if you like it that way. Or, or I want your input on this thing. So Friday, looking forward to it. It's going to be a nice time. Right. And as I mentioned, I've joined forces with an amazing, amazing company, ASAP Network. All sports, all plays. That's going to be fun. Right. So you got it right there. So we're keeping busy. I don't know if you do this, but I've noticed people, when you go on vacation, as we went on vacation for like a month and a half, we took a break, had to free our mind. But in that process, you're on vacation. You're still thinking about the process of getting back to work, looking at the plan and what you want to do. I don't know how you do your planning board, if you plan it out weekly, bi-weekly, monthly, or however you do it, but there is a plan. I usually do mine in three months. By month three, I should be here. You know, I should be here. And if that happens, okay, then I go to the next three months. Okay, boom. The six months, that's a little bit too long for me. But the three-month plan, you can pretty much stick to it. Stick to your guns and go from there. I'm not telling you how you should do it. I'm just telling you what I did when I was on vacation. I was thinking about what I want to achieve, what I want to put my foot into, and see if this thing can pop off and happen. And I tell you, it's been going as planned and there's more to come more to come i'm excited and excited and ecstatic i'm enthusiastic enthusiasm enthusiasm i think that's what i showed and displayed as i was watching the espn 30 for 30 documentary discussing the 1986 match on how this thing was done and that's always been interesting to me you know not just when teams win but did we really pay attention on this whole path? I don't care what sport it is. There were certain key moves made. Some we didn't pay attention to. Some we totally forgot about. And the ones we had no idea this was done, and it meant that much to the team. If we have this one key element or ingredient or player, we're going to go for our coach, GM, owner. However you want to put it. And to me, that's, that's a beautiful thing. When you get all the players to buy in, we hear all these sports quotes, we all, all, everybody got to buy into the system. That's true to a point. That's true to a point. The way players handle competition coming in, that has to be key. That has to be very, very key. How you handle the competition. It's no shoving your face that they're bringing out another first baseman, that they picked up another running back. They went and got another shooting guard. What if something happens to you? Don't you want the understudy to be just as good as you? You don't want them to be less than you because now the team is going to go down. You can't be that way to want to see the understudy do bad. And when everybody buys into that, you get W's out of there. You get everybody want to be a part of the winning program, the winning system. This is going to work for us. But there is a, a how can I put this, now that we're in a technology world, there is proven data out there right now that's letting you know how much of a window of opportunity that you have by putting in your stats into the machine, it's going to put out what it actually thinks, how long you can put this together. How long could we go on this run, realistically speaking? We're talking financial plan. We're talking injuries. We're talking mindset. Now with all the mental health that's being talked about and looked at seriously, you got to put all those factors in place. And if that works out, boom, let's, let's move forward. But when they didn't have those type of formulas, it just went on the eye test, as they called it. That's why I love the movie Secret of the Curve. The simplicity of the game. The simplicity of spotting out talent. Sometimes it's overlooked because we put too much stock and value into what the computer is going to tell us. You know damn well how to get to old London and Sons off Natural Bridge and Goodfellow. You don't need a GPS to tell you that. Some shit you just should know. But for some reason, everybody wants to go to the computer and see what the computer thinks about said talent. How much time do we have with this athlete? How much time do I have to instill in him what I see in him to pull out this plan? Him or her? How much time do we have? But looking at this 1986 Mets team and how baseball was in 86 was just remarkable. Remarkable. That team had some hitters. Literally. <laughs> because they could fight. They could fight. And, and Doc Gooden, come on now. Have, I've never heard too many people compared to Doc Gooden. 
But his presence on that mound, that high leg kick. What did Wally Backman say? When Doc Gooden pitched, all of the bones and muscles in his body moved. All of them. That's a unique gift. There have been some people who have a unique wind-up approach, but there's only one Doc Gooden. I, think the next, I hope the next generation don't compare their athletes so much to athletes of yesteryear. Let them be their own athlete. I think Doc is his own individual guy. There has been no one remotely close to Doc Gooden. Remotely close. They, they all bring something different to the table. And the way that man controlled that plate, the way he went at them hitters at 19 years old. Come on now. Unheard of. Unheard of. And he knew how to handle that. Well, a little bit. Well, he needed some help, you know. 420, booger sugar, alcohol, and sex. Which the 1986 Mets had sex in a dugout between innings. Now, we all know how your body feels when you get done having sex. I'm talking to the men. Ladies, y'all not in this conversation. I'm talking to the men. When you get one of them good ones on you, your legs are not there. <laughs> your stamina is shot. <laughs> You're gasping for air, water, Gatorade, Pedialyte. Help me. So the fact they went out there and played ball, smelling like weed and hooker spit, Winning the majority of the time is impressive. Can you imagine if we had managers in the way the MLB drug policy was then, the drug and alcohol policy was then, the way it was monitored then? How would today said players react to that? Oh, boy. Oh, boy. <laughs> oh, my God. Because <laughs> we see what happened during the pandemic with some of these ball players doing their downtime. They would get on the internet and tell us all their personal business. Some of them even exposed things we didn't know or, or should not know. But we got by it and got through it. But they got the rest of it coming on. Parts 3 and 4 of the ESPN documentary on the New York Mets. There was just a few things that I saw last night about that and how the whole team was afraid of Kevin Mitchell. Because <laughs> Kevin Mitchell, they had rumors. They heard he chopped the cat's head off. They heard he shot a guy. I mean, to have... A backstory like that and nobody even knows you is amazing. It is amazing to me. But check that out if you get a chance. Don't forget to check us out on YouTube as well. We have a channel, Dre Montez. Get caught up on the latest episodes of Montez at Midday. And yes, it's Wednesday. We'll be uploading a new podcast episode today. My podcast is called Who's to Blame? Which you can get and listen to wherever you listen to your favorite podcast at. But we're on iTunes, Spotify, SoundCloud, Anchor, uh, Google Play, and what's the other one that we own, Dre? Talk to me now. Talk to me. Tumblr. One Tumblr as well. So you can get it all right there for your listening needs today. It's, it's Podcasts are great when you're cleaning up the house, when you're straightening up before you're about to have company, when you're cooking, when you're getting ready for the big game but the pregame show not on yet. Excellent time to listen to podcasts. Not just my any podcast out there because I have been listening to more and more podcasts out here and I tell you what it's some creative people out here it's some people bringing some real content to the table it really is I appreciate all of those guys and women that I've been listening to but as I mentioned at the top of the show if you're a podcaster whether you're a novice expert been doing it for years you you teach classes on it whatever it may be I would like to form a podcasting networking group not just online no we're gonna meet once a month brainstorm get to know each other have some few beers shoot back the shit once a month i bet we can learn from each other and grow with each other that's what this thing is for you know that's one of my biggest pet peeves when i'm gonna get into this nfl thing here shortly about this lebron and jordan conversation who needed who who needed what? Why this person can do it? Here's one thing I think we're all forgetting. Basketball is five on five. They didn't win a one-on-one -on -one league, right? So you're supposed to have what class? Say it with me. Teammates. Okay. If they wanted to be one-on-one, -on -one, they'd call it one-on-one. -on -one. I think golf is the only one-on-one -on -one sport out there. I mean, you really got to 
pay attention to your damn caddy. You got to speak the same body language. Now, if they were golfers and we, they were going head to head all the time, I think, yeah, that, okay, I got you. But this basketball, enough of it. I've, I've had enough. I've had enough of the the Jordan, LeBron. It, it's no comparison, people. Just let's, let's put it to bed. Let's put it to bed. I'd rather talk more about the Dallas Cowboys winning the Super Bowl. No, I don't. I can't do that one no more either. I, I try. But NFL, before I let you kids go, it did something very impressive the other night. I thought the Book of Manning was a great sports documentary. But Peyton and Eli Manning, watching football and talking was one of the most enjoyable moments I've had in quite some time. I have been wanting to do that for years. Commentate while the game is playing on that you need licensing permission and all this shit. You can't be showing TVs live and, and the video and all this and all that. That was then, but this is now. It's a little bit more accessible to do that. But they do it. They did a fine job. When Peyton Manning got up and put that helmet on and got the call in plays, I was feeling the moment. I watched the softball game on YouTube and I put on my damn uniform. <laughs> I was feeling the moment. You know, yeah. Coach, put Brum in. Let me get on the mound, coach. Let me get on the mound, coach. Let me get three innings. I got three innings left in me. I felt Peyton. He felt that I missed this shit. Even though the helmet didn't fit, that was a good comeback by Eli right there. But I enjoyed that. And I like the guests that they brought on, what they brought to the table. That was very, very well done by Eli and Peyton Manning. I really did enjoy it. But boys and girls and children of all ages, we have an action-packed day. Lots of things to do. It's about to get eventful. You're about to see me everywhere. I'm going to be like Kevin Hart. You're going to see me in every damn thing. Damn, Dre, what you doing? Damn, Dre. Dre, what are you? Dre, why are you in Australia? <laughs> Dre, why are you on a country music podcast? I, I'm telling you, it's about to get lethal. I'm about to take advantage of it all. Of it, I can see now. Not really. I'm still legally blind. But I mean, how I want the show to go. How I want the show to go. It's like when you buy your first car. You know how you want this thing to look. You know. That's why we name our cars. That's why we name our cars. Or our softball bats. You know what you want to call her. You know. Sherry has a name. Elizabeth. Yeah. But the, the future of the show is looking good. I want to thank all of you guys again. Shout out to the title sponsor, The Weed Squad St. Louis, located at 8088 Watson Road. Shout out to our fantasy football sponsor, Tower Pub, located in South City. Right there. Got the NFL Sunday ticket there for you. First time in 15 years. That a boy right there. I bet it was a hookup the first Sunday of the NFL season. Anybody hook up at a sports bar this NFL Sunday? Who did the, what they call it, the slow slut walk? Who, who did that? <laughs> the shame walk. <laughs> Who went home and who kids said, Mama, that's you? <laughs> oh, Dre, oh, Dre, you're too much. I'm not enough yet, kids. But thanks again for tuning in to the show, boys and girls and children of all ages. We'll be talking to you Friday, Montez at midday. And as I said, I will be uploading today's latest episode of Who's the Bunny, the podcast. In the words of my great-grandpappy, I'll holler at you later. But as I always say, if your back pockets are touching, it means you have no ass at all. Go on, sit down, girl. I have a good one out. Peace.